Hey there, this is Robert Kornacki, co-founder at Pima Studios. In this video, we're going to be talking about a brand new concept that we are pioneering called Stateful NFTs. So about half a year ago, we started this journey of creating Pima Engine and Pima Studios. And we took a look at the overall landscape of what is the state of blockchain gaming. As some of you may know, we released already a blog post and a video explaining why play to earn is destined to fail. And that was one of the very first things that kind of jumped straight out at us in terms of clear negatives in the industry that need to be improved on and gone past. But we're not really primarily focused on the negatives, though they have to be acknowledged so we don't fall back into those same holes and pitfalls. With Pima Engine, what we're developing, what we currently believe is the most advanced blockchain gaming engine currently being built. What we really wanted to focus on is not just, oh, slight improvements, right? So existing blockchain gaming is Web 2.5 gaming, where they take a Web 2 stack and they take just tokens and NFTs and then duct tape them together. And then they call that blockchain gaming. So this is almost like you know, taking your tokens and your NFTs and putting it on a centralized exchange and calling that, you know, uh, decentralized finance. In our opinion, that's not really how Web3 gaming should be. And in our opinion, that doesn't deserve the name Web3 gaming. And that's how we have dubbed all existing projects, which are not pursuing a trustless Web3 model for their games as Web 2.5 gaming. And with Pima Engine, with that kind of framework of understanding how to classify blockchain gaming, we see block, uh, Web 2.5 gaming, excuse me, as a dead end. But Web 3 gaming is actually the path forward, just like how in the rest of the blockchain world, it is the trustless and decentralized protocols that have longevity, and we think just like how in DeFi, a lot of primitives were discovered through the pursuit of making things decentralized, trustless, and not just sticking to centralized exchanges. Likewise, our premise at Pima Studios is that with looking at, from the very beginning, creating a gaming engine that's specifically designed to deliver on the vision of trustless Web3 gaming, we will also discover new primitives that help us in building games that were never possible before. That was an initial you know, idea. However, in the course of actually developing Pine Engine, we have discovered few. And the first one that I'll be sharing with you today in this video is stateful NFTs. So with typical NFTs, non-fungible tokens, right? Most people picture NFTs as just being an image attached to an asset that can't be duplicated on the blockchain. Some blockchain games have expanded on that and then you can, you know, you have your NFT and you can maybe take a fungible token and with the fungible token and the NFT, you can burn the NFT and create a new NFT. And people have kind of um, tried to mix and match some basic primitives on the smart contract level to make NFTs a little bit better but in effect, these NFTs are just kind of static, inactive, and almost like a rock, right? So if I take a stone and I spend 10, 20 hours, I can carve the stone into something beautiful and it looks nice and exciting. But that stone, once I've put it all together, it will never change. And the only way you can change it is by smashing the stone or the sculpture or whatever I built, and then you just have the pieces. And likewise with NFTs, it's effectively the same thing in the current era of NFTs, where you have an NFT and you can't really do anything with it, and the only way to do something with it is to smash it, which means to burn it, and then maybe out of the rubble of smashing it, you can get another NFT. And so with that kind of model, you can understand how for gaming, this is quite a restrictive a set of limits for being able to actually build deep blockchain integration. Because when someone buys an NFT for 
uh, an item, a piece of equipment, for a unit, for a character, that state in the NFT is just that one thing forever. As I mentioned, there's some cases where some uh, more advanced games or protocols try to burn NFTs, but this is a losing game because, for example, if you have an MMORPG and every time you level up your character and say there's 150 levels, you have to burn your NFT to go from level one to level two, this doesn't scale. The gas fees are gonna be astronomical. The UX is just horrible and pretty much it doesn't work, right? And so the industry has gone to a point where they've reached a local maxima where NFTs as they are today, as a tech for gaming have some use cases but the primary use cases end up being Web 2.5. And so they end up just being as duct tape for a Web 2 stack to then just add some fun tokenization and make it feel like it's really innovative and forward looking, but they don't tangibly do very much that users actually want. Because the current era of NFTs for gaming primarily focus on speculators. These NFTs don't provide any truly novel gameplay experience. They end up adding unsustainable economies that either speculators distort upwards to, you know, hundreds of dollars just to get in, maybe even thousand or two thousand dollars just to get in to play a game. Our speculators dump the price downwards of the NFTs, making, uh, you know, the good acting honest users and players suddenly lose a ton of money because maybe they spent two, three hundred dollars to get in the game and now suddenly because speculators dumped, oh, okay, now you have to, uh, if they want to sell their assets, they suddenly lost, you know, hundred fifty dollars. This era of NFTs doesn't actually give gamers anything and as a result, we don't have this adoption, right? The vast majority of gamers, they either don't care about NFTs, explicitly don't like NFTs because they've heard of all the pump and dump craziness and all that speculation. And the actual experience of players using NFTs, for the vast, vast, vast majority, there isn't really any benefit. There's just barriers of entries with gas fees, complexities, speculation in the marketplace, and constantly more and more problems that get away from the actual gameplay. And so looking at that state of affairs, even though many people are selling, oh, NFTs are amazing for gaming, they're the future, they're the future. With the existing tech of NFTs, no one's really been able to put together a coherent vision that will have longevity and it's not just a speculator to delight, right? And so that was one of the really exciting things for us, and specifically for me, when I really spent a lot of the initial time uh, designing all of the core parts of Pima Engine. Um, when we discovered stateful NFTs as a new primitive that was enabled thanks to Pima Engine, we got really excited. And so what I want to do is kind of take you through what, what stateful NFTs are, why they matter, and then um, our vision and our uh, next few steps going forward at Pima Studios to bring stateful NFTs to you. So stateful NFTs are a pretty simple concept at a very high level. Rather than having your NFTs, like all current generation of NFTs, you could call them NFTs 1.0, um, all of these NFTs, when you buy your NFT, it's like a rock. It might be sculpted, it might be beautiful, it might look really cool, it might even be a GIF and animated. But effectively, it's a rock at the end of the day because it can't change. And the only way to change it is to destroy it and then get a new NFT. With stateful NFTs, we have a new model. When you have a nice shiny rock, when you sculpt it, the reason it has value is because it's sculpted and if the, specifically it's sculpted in a way that no one else probably has that exact same sculpture, right? Because if everyone has the same sculpture, suddenly it's valueless. Because you can't do anything with it, it has no direct utility, it's effectively valuable because you have it and there is scarcity. So that's kind of NFTs 1.0 era mentality and tech. 
with stateful NFTs, we could colloquially call NFTs 2.0, um, we have a new model because rather than the NFT being just a rock that doesn't change, you can picture and understand your NFT to be more akin to an account in an MMORPG or a Pokemon or anything effectively that changes over time, that's stateful. So classical NFTs 1.0, these NFTs have no state that can change over time. They're just this one thing. Stateful NFTs, on the other hand, they are living, breathing in the sense that you can buy a stateful NFT with an initial starting state, say um, a character or a unit in a game. And it starts at level one, uh, 10 HP, five attack, five defense, etc., etc. And the really cool thing about stateful NFTs is that with the tech we have in Pima Engine, is that when you play, play excuse me, um, a Pima game that has full stateful NFT support, this NFT then gathers state over time and changes and develops. So what that means is you can have this level one character, you play a Pima uh, game which has direct support for the stateful NFT. And over time, as you play, your unit gains experience, levels up, gains stat points, potentially fights a boss, gets equipment, and that's all directly, uh, either directly onto the stateful NFT or a set of stateful NFTs, depending on how complex the game is, yada, yada, yada. But effectively, you have an entirely new model because you don't just have a dead rock for an NFT but instead you have a living, breathing, stateful NFT that actually grows, develops, and has inherent value based off of your gameplay and what you do in the game itself. In the old model, you have a shiny sculpture that can be used in the game, like a chess piece, but your chess piece doesn't grow, doesn't develop, and that might be useful for some subset of games, to be clear. But the vast majority of games that exist today, they really require stateful characters, accounts, and so forth. And stateful NFTs in the blockchain gaming world are the only primitive that provide this. We constantly see, you know, some of the most exciting games that millions upon millions of people jump onto are constantly games where they hold persistent state in the form of characters, units, animals that develop over time through the span of the game. We even see, you know, um, in many MMORPGs, black market economies, where people level up characters uh, and then they sell those characters, right? And this, because of the whole Web2 mentality, this was not allowed. However, in the stateful NFT world, we can bake this into the model. So you buy a low level stateful NFT. And to be clear, these stateful NFTs because they gain value over time as you play and you perform things in the games, unlike in your uh, NFTs 1.0 where they're sculptures and they have to be scarce and valuable, the value of a stateful NFT doesn't accrue from the initial point of purchasing it. So for example, our stateful NFTs can have a low price of say five, ten dollars and from there as you play the game, as you get equipment, as you get items, as you level up your stateful NFT, then it accrues value. And so we really change how the entire model works for NFTs in games, because not only do we now have an entire new primitive in stateful NFTs, we can actually lower the barrier of entry and still have economies in these games that makes sense for the sustainability of the game itself and also for new players to keep coming in. So as we've seen, like some games in the NFT 1.0 world, and I think I may have mentioned this earlier, they may cost one to $2,000 at their peak just for players to get in. And this is the scarcity based mindset of this NFT 1.0 world, right? Where the only reason this is valuable is because a lot of people want it at this specific moment and so you get speculation, 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 but then that's just at the detriment of the game itself. With stateful NFTs, we really move forward. We can offer an uncapped supply of stateful NFTs because just like in an MMORPG, there's no cap of how many 
uh, accounts can ever be created, right? As long as you're willing to create a new account, maybe pay a subscription fee depending on the model, you can have 20 characters, right? And that doesn't inherently cause problems in the system. And no one's going, if I buy, or sorry, if I create an account on MMORPG and I have a level one character, no one's gonna value that level one character because they can just create an account themselves. And so the dynamics truly shift as we enter into a world of stateful NFTs because we really reconfigure the value of the NFTs themselves in games to not be the scarcity and this speculation based model, but instead focus on the actual value. So just like in games where the actual value is the top tier equipment, the end game equipment you get from raids or so forth, that model where people put value and sorry, generate value through their time and effort into the games and, you know, really pushing the game to its limits. That's where the value is. And that's where all the people really focus in these games. And so the old NFT model focusing focuses effectively on making everything in the game about speculation and looking at the market while in the stateful NFT model, you as a player, can choose. Do you care about looking at the market? Then you can get into the marketplace, you level up your stateful NFTs, do lots of fun stuff, and then go to the marketplace and play that game. If you're a normal person, you just don't care, you just wanna play the game, that's awesome too. You can just get your stateful NFT for a low price, play the game, level it up, get all the equipment, and you don't have to deal with everyone else. Or have to even care how everyone else is playing, what's the status of everything. You're just playing the game you, you're really enjoying and having fun in. And then as a result, at the end of it, maybe you know you spend hundreds of hours into the game, but you've had enough. The really exciting part of this is that there's no reason for us to follow the Web2 mentality of, oh, it's real world trading to trade your accounts, to trade your characters. We can, in the stateful NFT world, we can bake in this directly into the model where once you're done playing the game and you don't find that uh, you wanna keep investing time and effort into it, you can simply sell your stateful NFTs. And so a lot of the key parts of excitement that people find great enjoyment in the current world of online gaming, a lot of it just is impossible in the old NFT 1.0 world. And stateful NFTs, while I will be perfectly honest, uh, will take a little bit of time to get to their full potential. And as a new tech, you know, there's a lot of uh, incremental steps in terms of development that we have to make to fully get there. However, both as a wider vision for the long-term future, as a brand new primitive that has never been possible before, and as something which we're already inching our way towards, which I'll get to in a moment, as releasing a very first version of stateful NFTs but if not, they've already been released once this video is out. Uh, but effectively, stateful NFTs flip the old scarcity and uh, static-based NFT model and bring us into a future where we can actually look at making blockchain games, not just the speculator's delight, but actually something gamers will enjoy and to some people, be a completely you know, a new step forward in technology and excitement, but for others, they can still enjoy gameplay just like a standard game and not feel this abrasive barrier of entry that they're getting into this crypto game where they have to spend countless hundreds of dollars on, but they still have a five, 10, 15, 20, $30 entry fee to just get in and they can still play a full-fledged game whether they care about the full market dynamics and everything else underneath. So that's the overall high vision of what are stateful NFTs, why do stateful NFTs matter, and what do they actually provide to people? We at Pima Studios are really excited to be the first project and company in the space that's really a, um, discover the concept of stateful NFTs and to also be the first people to delivering them. And so, as I mentioned, we have 
uh, I believe at this point when this video is released, we have already released the Vulcaneers, the Paima Vulcaneers, which are the very first stateful NFTs to ever be uh, put out. We're really excited about this because uh, Paima Vulcaneers will be integrating into Paima Studios' very first game, Jungle Wars NFT Rumble. And so people can get a very first taste of both Trustless Web3 Gaming through Jungle Wars and their very first taste of stateful NFTs with Paima Vulcaneers putting them together. We're really excited for this because both Jungle Wars is a first test of what is possible using Paima Engine with already two following games being in development at Paima Studios. And Paima Vulcaneers are also a first step into uh, how stateful NFTs can be used in games. And though both of these, both the Paima Vulcaneers and Jungle Wars are just the first step, I think it would be really exciting for people to try out for themselves and get a taste and an understanding of how this works. We, as I mentioned, have already two following games and also uh, we're really working on the maturation of all the tech underneath Pima Engine step by step by step. And so we hope that as we release the games, uh, the new features, the new primitives, and we bring them out to users and players over time, the understanding of not just, okay, uh, Web 2.5 gaming, a scarcity-based mindset, building economies that just focus on speculation while providing real gamers very little benefit. We don't think that's a sustainable model, and though that's where the industry is today, we think that it will be possible to push the industry towards trustless Web3 gaming. And that, at our core, is the vision of Pima Studios, and that's what we're going to be moving towards step by step by step. And so, if that vision interests you, if Stateful NFTs got you excited, please do visit pimastudios.com and you can get more info about uh, both the Pima Vulcan here, Stateful NFTs, you can get more information about Jungle Wars, and then you can also hop on over to Twitter to follow us to get the latest updates and join our Discord to join the Pima community and also you know, take part in this new step into trustless Web3 gaming. There's a pretty long path ahead of us to get from where we are today to a vision where everything's decentralized, we have really matured uh, stateful NFTs and a lot of other primitives that we're uh, developing and discovering with Pime Engine, but we are at a really awesome pace as we've only been at this for half a year and we already have you know, the first taste of stateful NFTs and the first trustless Web3 game being released. And so if all this excites you, please do follow us on all the platforms I mentioned. And we really do think there's going to be a lot of amazing stuff in this space. And this is just the beginning and we're excited to be with you here building it all. Thanks again for watching and please have a great day.